all that it's difficult to avoid massive cliches when you're doing a sports film. Mm. But let's just get those ones out of the way. We're looking for an underdog underdog story who triumphs against all the odds. Um, so you're sort of drawn towards the recent Cardiff Devils winning the playoffs, having not won it for so long, winning the league title, having not won it for so long. And given that where they were a few years ago, it is a proper rags to riches rise. I mean, they were in real danger, weren't they, a couple of years ago under Pope? They were a mess. I mean, absolute mess. You know, they missed the playoffs, finished ninth, and within four years, they've won everything there is to win domestically. Having won very little at all um, in the rest of the 2000s. So that's that's you can probably make a nice story about that as a team. Mm. As an individual, the one that springs to mind, and the IHL part of it is only part of the story, but it's the David Beauregard story. Yeah. Because what happened to that hockey career? You know, how much further up the, the system he could have played, given the talent he had, and then to lose that in the way he did, but to still you know, succeed and have a hockey career is extraordinary. And given that he was part of the Panthers team that won the title after the 56 years, that again has all the aspects you would want. I'm not sure what his personal life situation is, but it's a Hollywood film, so we can be creative with, you know, his family life around this time. That's uh, that's the license that we have in this situation. But just, you know, the drama of, you know, losing his eye but still being able, or still scoring on the play, um, but then to then to fight on through it and, and have a hockey career is, is just extraordinary. And also, I think you're right, it also helps that he then goes to the club that couldn't. You know, the club that struggled, the club that can never find their way, you know, always always seemingly lost in the, in the shuffle when it came to finding the league. And the one-eyed man became king and helped them win that I mean that story you know you talk about rags to riches and I think the Panthers story is very rarely rags to riches they've always been a very successful club but them winning the league that year was such an overcoming of their own almost like demons wasn't it yeah the weight of history weighs down on all the fans and that transmits itself to the players it can't be avoided when it's been that long okay so we've got David Beauregard We've got, uh, we've had a think about the, the the Cardiff Devils. Are there any other stories that kind of leap out at you? Well, you can probably make a decent film out of pretty much anything. Because, I mean, the Steelers made a pretty good two-hour documentary on Nine Days of Madness. I mean, well, that, that was is, a, a that terrific was pretty watch. good, wouldn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it probably doesn't work as a film, but as a documentary it works. Mm. But I just wonder if it might be better to go down the the other route of sort of, you know, the last days of the Capitals, you know, as yeah. a, it, maybe the story doesn't have a happy ending, but it's just the story of, you know, Scott Neal and not a lot of other people trying to save that franchise, yeah. you know, and then losing the, losing the rights to the races and all the th- things that sort of lead up to that of a club that's on the decline and you just can't save it. You know, it's not a feel-good story by any means, but there is a story to tell there. Probably also with the Stingrays as well. Yes, Although, I was about to say. That's uh, a more of a, you know, a financial situation that, you know, they just couldn't afford to pay the bills. But, given how close they came that year to, you know, potentially winning, uh, winning a title, you know, that playoffs, they weren't far off it. I mean, Moneyball has an an unhappy end, ending, really, when you think about it, you know. Yes, yes, it does. They still end up losing in the playoffs anyway, you know. Um, the the one that I thought of again when I when I was thinking about it is Team GB's run to gold, and I think you would have to start the movie two years before it happened. You know, two or three years ago when we were being relegated, and we thought, "Where's British hockey going to be?" And then, not very long later, we're winning gold and joining the top flight again. And you could also got... probably give a nod, a, mm. a nod and a wink to the team that won it 
during the Olympics as well. Yeah, because you've got the the two failures in the final. Not failure is a strong word, but the two previous years when they'd gone to the final game, just needing a win and not quite managing it yes. with a goal against in the final few minutes. You know, those two campaigns weren't failures, but it, they didn't achieve what they set out to do. Mm. And so, you know, the back-to-back promotions that then followed are most unexpected. But it's not necessarily an elite league story. So I, if that was the original question, or are we Yeah, that's true. Out? That's true. What about the rise of the Brayhead clan? Those early years. I, or maybe not the Brayhead clan. Maybe the the rise and very quick fall of the Vipers. Newcastle or Chesters or River Kings, you know. Yeah, North East Hockey has got a great history. Well, and all did. that's left now is the Billingham Stars. Yeah. You know, the... Uh, I suppose the Whitley Bay as well, sorry, I forget the Whitley Warriors. Um, but yeah, given that, you know, Durham used to dominate the league and Newcastle won, uh, you know, made finals and won an elite league playoffs, there's so much history, probably so many stories to tell. I'm just not aware of what the uh, what the individual storyline would be. You know who's the who is the main character of that story? I'm, I'm not quite versed enough in the the history of the wasps. The Phil Hill story would be interesting. The always the bridesmaid, never a bride tale until the very end. Yeah, because he lost all those playoff finals, didn't he? With Cardiff, never won one. Came to Sheffield and finally did score the goal. To, did yeah, yeah, to to help bring it home as well. So I think that would be an interesting angle to look at it from. Because, again, I think the reason why the, the Dava Beauregard story would be so interesting is it's about that personal endurance and that willingness to compete and to succeed. You can almost see the story arc happening before your eyes. You can almost see the idea that, you know, he has this promising hockey career and, you know, loses his eyesight and could have been a contender, you know, as as, as it would go, and still found success and still found greatness. You know, and I think there are plenty of playoff moments that would gather a decent kind of. And again, I think we always come at it from a Sheffield point of view. But Frankie Doyle not winning anything in his entire career until winning the you know until winning the last thing he was ever going to win in his career, I think is just amazing. You know, all those players who go out finishing on a title, I think is always just really fascinating and interesting. Um, you know, we're we're good at telling good stories. I think at the moment at the Elite League because there's some good ones to tell. Let me throw one more underdog story at you. Please do. Let's go back to October two thousand and nine. Okay. And the Sheffield Steelers are not very good. No. And their new netminder Kevin Reiter is not having the best start to the season. Poor Kevin. I liked. Kevin. And on the yeah, but on the Saturday. He hurts his leg. Yes. Pulled muscle, so he's out. And the bad news is Sheffield are hosting a tournament the following day and he's not going to play in it. Step forward, hero of the hour, Dan Green. Oh, the Dan Green 2020 story. Oh, yes. Yes, absolutely. I'd I'd watch that. (laughs) Mainly so I could watch the 2020 Cup again. (laughs) Mainly because I could watch the 2020 Cup because I think in terms of as a one-day reflections to while of hockey it was perfect it had the panthers being routed in the first round because they didn't oh, care to be fair they only lost 6-0 <laughs> yeah because they in 40 minutes because they just didn't care about the it, they clearly just didn't care about the tournament at all it had drama and all the rest of it and it had your backup netty pulling off a blinder to win a tournament which you've never repeated. You know, he's the only person to have won that trophy, you know. Part of the only team that ever won that trophy. I think that's fantastic. But optimism couldn't possibly have been any lower from the Steelers fans going into Absolutely that. Absolutely not. Because the team was playing poorly, even with their first choice import netminder. In. Yeah, we were. So to then stick a backup in, in an unusual format, the Steelers are at home. They've got the majority of the crowd here. It's not a massive crowd by any means, but... If the Steelers go out in game one, that wrecks the tournament. So, I've, you know, the Elite League itself kind of needs Sheffield to do okay in this to keep the fans hanging around. I mean, they sold a lot of tickets to Nottingham 
that day as well, if I remember correctly. There are a lot of Nottingham fans in that venue for them to not bother. But yeah, it's, it's just the... Obviously, Dan Green had played before. He's an experienced goalie. He started for Basingstoke many times. He would start for Sheffield many more times throughout that season. But just the thrust into the big moment out of nowhere and then to respond as he did, it's, that was outstanding. He would also finish with Jason Hewitt scoring a goal, so I'm always for that. So that's it for another episode. If you have any comments about the issues we discussed or suggestions for future hypotheticals, then tweet us at Hockey Hypo. And make sure you leave us a comment and a rating wherever you're listening from. On behalf of Stephen Dowson, this is Jonathan Fernley saying goodbye. Goodbye.